The air crackled with a sense of urgency in Beijing. It wasn't the usual hushed, bureaucratic atmosphere of a Chinese government press conference. Instead, it was a whirlwind of numbers, a frenzy of announcements, a desperate attempt to resuscitate the world's second-largest economy from its slumber. The People's Bank of China's governor, Pan Gongsheng, stood center stage, a figurehead of the central bank's bold, if somewhat desperate, bid to rekindle the flames of Chinese growth. It was a dramatic, almost theatrical unveiling, a carefully orchestrated symphony of measures designed to quell the anxieties of investors and, most importantly, to reassure the world that the emperor still had his clothes on. The news was hardly a surprise. China's economic engine had been sputtering for months, coughing under the weight of a stubbornly sluggish real estate market and a consumer base hesitant to open its purse strings. The nation's stock market, a gauge of investor confidence, was reeling, tumbling further into a deep chasm of uncertainty. The answer? A flood of liquidity, a torrent of monetary stimulus, a promise of a more lenient regulatory environment. It was a familiar tune, a melody China has hummed before the chorus of, we'll do whatever it takes to stave off the specter of economic stagnation. The central bank, in a flurry of activity, slashed a key short-term interest rate and announced plans to reduce the amount of money banks must hold in reserve, effectively injecting a jolt of life into the financial system. The message was clear. We're here, we're listening, we're acting. The property sector, the fulcrum of China's economic woes, received a special dose of attention. The central bank unveiled a package of measures designed to ease the burden on homeowners, lowering borrowing costs on a staggering $5.3 trillion in mortgages. The government also loosened restrictions on second home purchases, hoping to entice buyers back into the market and reignite the dormant real estate engine. The stock market, bruised and battered by the recent downturn, was offered a lifeline. The central bank pledged at least $113 billion in liquidity support, a financial crutch designed to prop up the faltering market. The government even hinted at the creation of a market stabilization fund, a symbolic shield against the storm of uncertainty that had swept through the Chinese markets. The reaction was instantaneous. The benchmark CSI 300 index, a barometer of the Chinese stock market's health, surged as much as 4%, a glimmer of hope amidst the gloom. Commodities markets also rose, a reflection of the optimism sparked by the government's actions. The unveiling of these measures was a calculated move, a deliberate attempt to reassure a world watching with a mix of apprehension and skepticism. China, after all, had a reputation to uphold. The nation that had for decades boasted of rapid, consistent growth was now battling to maintain its position as a global economic powerhouse. But even the most fervent supporters of the Chinese government were hesitant to declare victory. The stimulus package, while undeniably ambitious, was a far cry from the bazooka stimulus China had employed in the past. The doubts remained. Was this enough to break China's longer-term deflationary pressure, to truly address the underlying issues plaguing its economy? The central bank's efforts were a bandage on a wound that ran far deeper than the superficial issues of interest rates and reserve requirements. China's economic woes were rooted in a fundamental shift in consumer sentiment, a loss of confidence that no amount of monetary easing could fully address. Layoffs were looming, casting a pall of fear over the workforce. Corporate profits were dwindling, eroding the sense of stability that had once been a hallmark of the Chinese economy. Property prices were still falling, a stark reminder of the fragility of the real estate market. While the central bank's measures might have offered a temporary reprieve, they did little to address these underlying concerns. The question remained, could China's consumers, battered by a decade of unprecedented economic expansion, regain their appetite for spending? The answer, it seemed, lay in the hands of the finance ministry, the other half of the government's economic duet. While the central bank orchestrated the symphony of monetary stimulus, the finance ministry held the score, the power to unleash the fiscal arsenal that could truly revitalize the economy. But the finance ministry was strapped for cash, its coffers depleted by the plummeting revenue from land sales. Local governments, burdened by a mountain of debt, were unable to invest in infrastructure projects, the traditional engine of Chinese growth. The stimulus package, therefore, was a two-part act, a carefully choreographed performance that required both the central bank and the finance ministry to play their parts. The central bank had taken its bow, its role played out, 
The stage now belonged to the finance ministry, the pressure mounting to deliver the final, decisive act. The fate of the Chinese economy hung in the balance, a delicate dance between monetary and fiscal policies, a delicate balance that could easily tip the scales. The world watched, waiting for the next move, the next chapter in this economic saga, wondering if the emperor's new clothes were truly enough to restore the glory of the Chinese economy. But the emperor's new clothes were, in fact, a disguise. It hid a growing unease, a gnawing fear that the emperor, despite his confident pronouncements, was beginning to feel the chill of a winter that might not end. The recent stimulus package unveiled by the People's Bank of China is not merely a series of isolated economic moves. It is a symptom of a deeper, more complex economic malaise gripping the nation. This is not just a cyclical downturn, but a structural shift a reassessment of the Chinese economic model that has driven the nation's remarkable rise. The key to understanding China's economic challenges lies in recognizing the limitations of the country's traditional growth engine, investment-driven development. For decades, China fueled its growth through a relentless cycle of infrastructure projects, real estate speculation, and industrial expansion. This approach, while undeniably effective, was inherently unsustainable a house of cards built upon the foundation of ever-increasing debt. The cracks in this model began to appear in the late 2000s, when the global financial crisis exposed the vulnerabilities of the Chinese economy. The government, recognizing the inherent risks of its growth model, attempted to shift its focus towards consumption-driven growth. But this transition proved to be a slow and painful process, a delicate dance between the old and the new. The recent downturn is a stark reminder of the challenges inherent in this transition. The real estate sector, the backbone of the investment-driven economy, is now burdened by excessive debt and a glut of unsold properties. Consumer confidence has waned, as households struggle to make ends meet amidst a slowing job market and a sense of uncertainty about the future. The government's response to this crisis has been a mix of old and new, a blend of traditional stimulus measures and attempts at structural reforms. The monetary easing announced by the central bank is a clear example of the government's reliance on tried-and-true methods. But the government is also pushing for reforms, seeking to create a more sustainable, consumption-driven economy. This push for reform is evidenced by the government's efforts to promote innovation, create a more competitive market environment, and strengthen social safety nets. These efforts are still in their early stages, but they represent a shift in thinking a recognition that the old model is no longer sustainable. The transition to a consumption-driven economy is a daunting task, fraught with political and economic challenges. The government must find a way to manage the transition without triggering a destabilizing economic shock. This will require careful coordination between monetary and fiscal policies, a delicate balance between short-term stimulus and long-term reforms. The recent stimulus package is a step in the right direction, but it is only a first step. The real test of the government's economic strategy will come in the months and years ahead, as the country navigates the transition to a new, more sustainable model. The world will be watching, eager to see if the emperor's new clothes are indeed a sign of strength, or a mere disguise for a deeper, more fundamental crisis. The Chinese housing market, once a symbol of the nation's economic prowess, is now a looming specter, a haunting reminder of the vulnerabilities inherent in the investment-driven model. The recent decline in property prices has sent shockwaves through the economy, casting a long shadow over consumer confidence and economic growth. The problem is not simply one of falling prices. It is a cascade of interconnected issues, a vicious cycle of declining demand, rising debt burdens, and dwindling investor confidence. The government's efforts to reignite the housing market have been met with limited success. The roots of the housing crisis can be traced back to the government's relentless pursuit of investment-driven growth. The real estate sector, fueled by cheap credit and a culture of speculation, ballooned into a behemoth, accounting for a significant portion of the country's GDP. This growth was driven by a belief that property prices would continue to rise indefinitely, a self-fulfilling prophecy that created a bubble waiting to burst. The bursting of this bubble began in 2014, as the government attempted to rein in speculative lending and impose stricter regulations on the real estate sector. However, the slowdown in the housing market was not just a result of government intervention. It was also fueled by a growing sense of unease among consumers, a realization that the relentless rise in property prices was unsustainable. 
The decline in property prices had a ripple effect throughout the economy, impacting consumer confidence, household spending, and corporate profits. It also created a vicious cycle of debt, as homeowners found themselves with mortgages they could no longer afford. The government's efforts to stem the decline in property prices have been met with mixed results. The recent stimulus package included measures designed to ease the burden on homeowners, such as lowering mortgage rates and easing restrictions on second home purchases. However, these measures have yet to significantly impact the market, as the underlying problems of excessive debt and declining demand persist. The future of the Chinese housing market is uncertain. The government's efforts to stimulate the market are likely to have a limited impact in the short term. The real challenge lies in addressing the underlying problems of debt and declining demand. The government could consider more aggressive measures, such as a debt forgiveness program for homeowners struggling to make their mortgage payments. It could also focus on improving affordability by making it easier for first-time buyers to enter the market. However, any significant intervention in the housing market carries political and economic risks. The government must weigh the potential benefits of intervention against the potential consequences, such as moral hazard and a further distortion of the market. The Chinese housing market is at a crossroads, a test of the government's ability to navigate the transition to a more sustainable economic model. The government must find a way to address the challenges of excessive debt, declining demand, and a growing sense of uncertainty. The outcome of this battle will have a profound impact on the future of the Chinese economy. The Chinese consumer, once a beacon of optimism, a driver of economic growth, is now a figure of uncertainty, a source of concern for policymakers and economists alike. The recent downturn in the economy has cast a pall over consumer sentiment, as households struggle to make ends meet amidst a slowing job market, falling property prices, and a sense of uncertainty about the future. The decline in consumer confidence is a multifaceted problem rooted in a confluence of economic and social factors. The slowdown in economic growth has led to job losses and a decrease in household income. The decline in property prices has eroded household wealth, making consumers more reluctant to spend. Furthermore, the government's crackdown on corruption and the growing inequality in Chinese society have created a sense of unease among consumers, a fear that the economic opportunities they once enjoyed are disappearing. The decline in consumer spending has a significant impact on the Chinese economy. Consumer spending accounts for a large share of GDP, and a decline in consumer confidence can lead to a vicious cycle of lower economic growth, job losses, and further declines in spending. The government's efforts to stimulate consumer spending have been met with limited success. Tax cuts and subsidies have had a modest impact, but they have not been enough to reverse the downward trend in consumer spending. The government must address the underlying problems that are driving consumer anxiety. This means addressing the issues of job insecurity, income inequality, and rising living costs. The government could consider measures such as increasing the minimum wage, providing affordable housing, and investing in education and healthcare. The government could also focus on building consumer confidence by creating a more transparent and predictable economic environment. This could involve improving the quality of data released by the government strengthening the rule of law, and promoting competition in the market. The Chinese consumer is a crucial driver of economic growth. The government must find a way to restore consumer confidence and encourage spending. This will require a comprehensive approach, addressing both economic and social issues. The future of the Chinese economy depends on it. While the central bank has taken center stage in the recent economic drama, the finance ministry remains the silent, but crucial, partner in this economic dance. The finance ministry holds the power of the purse, the ability to unleash the fiscal arsenal that could truly revitalize the Chinese economy. The finance ministry is currently facing a number of constraints that limit its ability to deploy fiscal stimulus. The most significant constraint is the sharp decline in revenue from land sales, a key source of funding for local governments. This decline has crippled the ability of local governments to invest in infrastructure projects a traditional driver of Chinese growth. The government is also facing increasing pressure to address the growing level of public debt, a legacy of the investment-driven growth model. The government must balance the need for fiscal stimulus with the need to control debt levels, a delicate balancing act that requires careful judgment and a long-term perspective. Despite the constraints, there are a number of options available to the finance ministry to provide fiscal stimulus. 
the government could increase spending on social welfare programs, such as health care and education. It could also invest in infrastructure projects, such as transportation and energy, which would create jobs and boost economic activity. The effectiveness of fiscal stimulus depends on coordination with monetary policy. If the central bank is easing monetary policy while the finance ministry is tightening fiscal policy, the overall impact on the economy could be muted. The government must ensure that both monetary and fiscal policies are working in concert to achieve the desired economic outcomes. The finance ministry's role is crucial in the Chinese economic recovery. The government must find a way to overcome the constraints on fiscal policy and deploy stimulus effectively. This requires careful coordination with the central bank and a commitment to long-term sustainability. The economic struggles of China, the world's second-largest economy, are not just a domestic issue. They have far-reaching implications for the global economy. China's slowdown has already dampened demand for commodities and affected global supply chains. The potential for a more significant downturn in China could have a cascading effect on the global economy, potentially triggering a recession in other parts of the world. China's slowdown has already had a significant impact on global trade, as demand for imports has weakened. The decline in Chinese demand has particularly affected commodity-producing countries, such as Australia and Brazil. The trade war with the United States has further complicated the global trade landscape, creating uncertainty for businesses and investors. China's economic woes have also raised concerns about the stability of the global financial system. The country's large amount of debt, both domestic and foreign, has made investors nervous about the potential for a financial crisis. The recent decline in the yuan has also raised concerns about currency volatility and the potential for capital flight. The global community is closely watching China's economic performance and its policy response. The recent stimulus package has been greeted with mixed reactions. Some observers are skeptical that the measures will be enough to turn the tide, while others are hopeful that they will provide a much-needed boost to the Chinese economy. The global community has a vested interest in a stable and prosperous China. The international community can play a constructive role by encouraging China to pursue policies that promote sustainable economic growth and reduce global risks. This includes encouraging China to open its markets, reduce its reliance on debt-fueled growth, and address issues of income inequality. China's economic future is intertwined with the global economy. The world will be watching to see how China navigates its economic challenges and whether it can continue to play a constructive role in the global economy. Behind the headlines, behind the economic statistics, there is a human face to the Chinese economic slowdown. It is the face of a worker who has lost their job, of a family struggling to make ends meet, of a young person facing a future clouded by uncertainty. The slowdown in economic growth has led to job losses in various sectors, from manufacturing to construction to retail. Workers are facing increased competition for jobs as companies cut back on hiring or lay off employees to reduce costs. The decline in wages and benefits has further strained household budgets, making it more difficult for families to make ends meet. The economic uncertainty has also created stress and anxiety for families across China. The declining property market has eroded household wealth, making it more difficult for families to save for the future or pay for their children's education. The fear of job losses and reduced incomes has created a sense of insecurity, making families more reluctant to spend and invest in the future. The economic slowdown has had a particular impact on young people who are entering a job market that is increasingly competitive and uncertain. Young graduates are facing challenges finding stable jobs, and many are forced to accept positions that are below their qualifications or pay less than they expected. The future for young people is uncertain as they grapple with rising costs of living and a growing sense of anxiety about their ability to achieve their dreams. The Chinese government is facing the challenge of managing an economic transition that is not only complex but also painful. The economic reforms aimed at creating a more sustainable and consumption-driven economy are creating winners and losers, as some sectors and regions benefit from the changes while others struggle to adapt. The government must find a way to mitigate the social costs of this transition by providing support to those who are most affected and ensuring that the benefits of economic growth are shared more equitably. The human face of economic uncertainty is a stark reminder that economic challenges are not just about numbers and statistics. They are about people, their lives, and their dreams. The Chinese economy is at a crossroads, a turning point in its remarkable journey of growth and development. 
the nation is transitioning from an investment-driven model to a more sustainable, consumption-driven model. This transition is fraught with challenges, but it is also an opportunity to create a more equitable and prosperous future for the Chinese people. The key to achieving sustainable growth lies in addressing the underlying challenges that have contributed to the current economic slowdown. This includes addressing issues of income inequality, promoting innovation, strengthening social safety nets, and creating a more transparent and predictable economic environment. The government has a crucial role to play in promoting sustainable growth. It must ensure that the benefits of economic growth are shared more equitably and that the most vulnerable members of society are protected. The government must also create a level playing field for businesses, encourage innovation, and invest in human capital. The private sector is also critical to achieving sustainable growth. Businesses must invest in innovation, create jobs, and promote responsible business practices. They must also work with the government to address social issues and create a more inclusive society. The quest for sustainable growth is a long-term journey, not a sprint. It requires a sustained commitment to reform, a willingness to embrace innovation, and a commitment to creating a more equitable and prosperous future for all. The Chinese economy has reached a turning point. The path ahead will be challenging, but it is also an opportunity to create a more sustainable and prosperous future. The stage is set, the players are in place, and the world watches with bated breath as the Chinese economic drama unfolds. The emperor's new clothes may be a disguise, but it is a disguise that could be transformative. The question remains, will the emperor himself see through the illusion and embrace the real transformation, or will he be forever trapped in a world of illusions? The answer, in the end, will determine the future of the world's second largest economy and its place on the global stage.